Oh God. Hey guys, welcome back to AdLib Talk, and this is my review for the Obi-Wan series. But before we start with this review, don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoy it, and please do consider subscribing. It's finally here, the Obi-Wan series, the series we've all been waiting for. The trailers have looked incredible, and everyone felt that this would be the series to save Star Wars. Yeah, hold your horses. I was completely underwhelmed by these first two episodes. Now, I don't want this review to turn into a full-blown rant, so let's go into it step by step. So, the series is set 10 years after the events of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. The whole series is directed by Deborah Chow and Joby Harold serves as the showrunner. Please do note that this review is filled with spoilers, so if you have not watched the first two episodes of the series, I would recommend stopping this video and continuing to watch my review after you watch the first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi. And without further ado, let's get right into that review. So episode one starts off with a fantastic four minute recap of the whole prequel trilogy. It makes you think that despite the prequels overall being quite a disappointment, there were some truly excellent moments here and there. The first proper scene we get is an Order 66 scene, which was great to see. However, you would think that the first scene of a Obi-Wan series would be used to introduce the titular character. Instead, the Order 66 scene is used to introduce a new character, Riva Savander, who throughout the series is called third sister. And moving on 10 years later, still no Obi-Wan. Instead, we see the arrival of the Grand Inquisitor, the fifth brother, and again Riva Savander. We're back on Tatooine, oh god, and we get to see the Grand Inquisitor interrogate the owner of a cantina as they search for a Jedi. Now that Jedi manages to escape, and then we finally get to see Obi-Wan, who now goes by the name of Ben. He has this menial job, apparently packing up meat, and he also overlooks Luke Skywalker. The Jedi, who had previously escaped Nari, approaches Obi-Wan for help, but Obi-Wan tells him this quite iconic line, the time of the Jedi is over. We then leave Tatooine to go to the planet Alderaan, where we are introduced to the young Princess Leia. Oh, great, child actor. Leia has made the habit to escape into the forests, and during one such escape, she's captured by, surprise, surprise, Flea. We get a really prolonged chase scene, which felt so tonally off compared to the rest of what was going on. In the meantime, we get a couple of great scenes involving Joel Edgerton as Uncle Owen. Edgerton, together with Ewan McGregor, are honestly the two saving graces of this series. Uncle Owen confronting Obi-Wan was truly compelling, extremely emotional, and had some fantastic writing to boot. Probably the only decent writing here. The same can be said for Uncle Owen standing up to the third sister. Edgerton's performance here is once more fantastic. Unfortunately, he is faced by in my opinion, one of the all-time worst Star Wars performances I have personally ever seen by Moses Ingram, which I will get into more detail later on. Episode 1 ends with Obi-Wan being contacted by Leia's adopted parents to save her, and eventually him deciding to do so. And at the same time, we discover that Leia's capture was all just a plot by the third sister to lure out Kenobi, as an episode, I thought that episode one was a decent introduction to the setting and to the characters. There were some positives and negatives, which I will describe in more detail later on. But overall, I was quite pleased with where we ended the first episode. Same, unfortunately, cannot be said about the second episode. So, Obi-Wan tracks the kidnappers to the planet of Dayu, a world taken straight out of Blade Runner. We get a great opening scene of the world together with another great scene of this homeless clone soldier asking for charity. And at the same time, we see the stormtroopers marching in this kind of out with the old, in with the new, worked really well here. Unfortunately, from now on, 
the whole series just devolves into absolute disappointment. We meet Haja Estri, and Haja is apparently a con man who is a Jedi impersonator. He sends Obi Wan to Leia's location, where Obi Wan is ambushed by Flea and his soldiers. He manages to escape and save Leia. A bounty is put out on his name and Leia eventually escapes from Obi-Wan somehow. And we get another absolutely hilarious chase scene with Obi-Wan running after her. Leia jumps off a roof and is saved by Obi-Wan's force power. They escape, helped by Haja again. And finally, Reva confronts Obi-Wan. She tells him that Anakin is still alive, the Grand Inquisitor arrives and she stabs him there is so much retconning of rebels oh this scene is so bad anyways kenobi escapes and we get another hilarious scene a hilarious like i said in the wrong way of reva shouting at him telling him we will find you it's not over it honestly is terrible as you can tell i'm not too happy about episode two my head was shaking throughout pretty much the whole episode but i think it's now time for me to get into specifics let's start off with the positives so overall i thought that ewan mcgregor gave us a fantastic performance as the titular character so far you can tell this is a man who has seen his whole world collapse and he blames himself for it ewan mcgregor's face showcases all this pain all this self-torture excellently i loved how we started to see a bit of life out of him once he met leia and started to kind of compare her to padme the look he gives leia when he tells her she reminds him of someone was great same thing could be said for his acting as obi-wan finds out that anakin is still alive why the scene overall was terrible, McGregor's performance is so, so good. It's a combination of confused emotions, panic, shock, and McGregor portrays all of this so, so well. Joel Edgerton is another great performer, and like I said in my recap, his two moments were two of my favorite parts of the series so far. As a character study of Obi-Wan, I think the series has done an overall decent job most of the writing for his character works and i think that throughout this whole season we will see him develop and change from a man who feels like he's lost everyone who denies help to a fellow jedi instead telling him to bury his lightsaber to the quirky fellow we see at the start of a new hope so the writing up to that point sort of works i must say that i also did quite enjoy the set design to be fair, Tatooine is Tatooine, so it's more of the same. But obviously the showrunners are forced to start off there. However, in the second episode, I enjoyed the look of the planet Dayu. It's a little cyberpunk in certain elements. I just wish we got to see more of it. Let's now talk about the negatives, of which there are a lot. So I have praised the writing for Obi-Wan's character, but the writing for almost every other character is quite terrible. First of all, we need to talk about the third sister. Riva Savander is portrayed as an angry, angry person who is really angry. Uh, and did you know she's really angry? What a one-dimensional performance by Moses Ingram. She has clearly been miscast in the role and clearly the writing for her character does not help her at all. All she does is frown and look angry through pretty much every scene she is in. Such a weak element of this series and this worries me quite a bit as it seems like she's going to have quite an important role moving forward in this series. Seeing how bad the interpretation has been so far, honestly it almost felt like a parody of a Star Wars villain at times. The moment at the end of episode 2, which he was shouting at Obi-Wan, actually had me laughing. What definitely did not make me laugh was seeing young Leia Organa. Now, I will not criticize Vivienne Lyra Blair, as I have made it a point on this channel to never criticize child actors. But honestly, anytime she was on screen, she was just so, so annoying. Her dialogue 
felt so out of place and she unfortunately has a lot of the worst moments of these two episodes especially including those two chase scenes which were both so so bad with regard to other characters i thought that flea appearing completely took me out of this episode and it kind of reminded me of ed sheeran appearing in game of thrones tonally the series is completely off the problem is that at one point series is an extremely dark and serious character study of a man who has seen the whole world completely collapse around him and then next moment we've got young princess leia running around with a chase scene that feels like it was taken straight out of a comedy movie i have to be honest i do feel like we initially had a much darker and more serious series here and then some suit watched it and uh, felt like it was too dark and they needed to add more child-friendly scenes in it and so they added in the child scenes for levity unfortunately what this did was completely destroy the tone the series worked so hard to achieve now the following are some minor nitpicks that annoyed me such as the cgi which did look quite cheap especially certain animals and certain aliens looked kind of off but i understand it's a serious budget so it's impossible for it to look as good as the movies the same can be said about the general scope of the whole series it all looks quite low budget there's no epic feeling here at all but i can accept it given the focus here is more of a kind of character study and the development of the character of obi-wan the cinematography work is okay-ish but nothing to write home about especially compared to the excellent work that we saw in the mandalorian also is it just me or is the soundtrack really really disappointing i had such high expectations knowing that the brilliant natalie holt would be working on it even the main theme by john williams is okay but nothing special when compared to his previous work on star wars and ultimately yeah it's a disappointing overall opening to episodes and it just feels like we ended up watching a bunch of filler the whole storyline we have seen in the first two episodes with obi-wan looking for leia and saving her could have been condensed into 15 minutes or not been included at all given that the whole point of this was just so obi-wan could leave tatooine and find out that anakin is still alive i get the feeling that this could have just been a two-hour movie but we'll see how the story develops so far i can only judge it on what i've seen and from what i've seen so far i think that episodes one and two have been quite mediocre almost mediocre to bad and so i feel they do deserve a two out of five and are basically saved only by the performance by ewan mcgregor and a good supporting performance by joel edgerton is it worth watching not really unless you're a really big fan of star wars in which case you've probably watched it already thank you so much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed that review and if you did don't forget to leave a like on this video and please do consider subscribing cheers and i'll see you guys next time right here on adlib talk